our goal and our mission is to provide a rigorous uh, curriculum for our students that's standards based, it's aligned with state standards, that there's high quality assessment, that there's um, um, progress monitoring, that we're doing both summative and formative assessments. But in the end, it comes down to how powerful and effective and rigorous is your curriculum. Science is one of my favorite departments when it comes to how they address academic rigor. The departments have developed what we call binds, syllabi. They're simply all of the work that is going to be covered in the course of the class. For example, if it's seventh grade science, every student in our school receives a department developed and designed um, set of activities, lab reports, handouts that's, that works in conjunction with the textbooks and all the labs. The power behind it is the work that goes into it. Because each time we teach the course, we sit down and reflect upon what worked and what didn't work, and then changes are made to the syllabus, or what my science teachers refer to as the bind. And then that allows us to have an ongoing conversation about the quality of our work. Since every teacher in the school uses the syllabus, we know that every student is receiving the same labs, the same assessments, the same worksheets, the same handouts. All of it is coordinated so that we can have meaningful conversations as a department about the rigor of the curriculum. The teachers are having really powerful conversations about what kids are, are um, engaged in, but also, more importantly, what they're learning and what they're not learning and why aren't they learning it. I take teaching science very seriously because I think as a nation we are in need of more people to go into sciences as well as into science teaching. When we're going to design lessons and design units, the first place we look obviously is the standards and we get our seventh grade essential standards from the tenth grade blueprint. We look at what do the kids need to know for that tenth grade test and we can spiral it down and at least introduce them to those topics in the seventh grade. So we've paced all our standards at the district level and we we know which standards we need to cover which particular quarters. So I focus a lot on literacy and I focus a lot on skills like how to learn science, how to read the textbook, how to write a summary, how to learn the vocabulary, how to um, do the processes, how to you know, make hypotheses. And, do, and I do think we're trying to teach more in depth and not cover absolutely everything, but have the kids have a really good understanding of the big ideas of life science. So we start with the standard and then we, um, you know, every lesson we try to say, well, how does this match up with the standards? and we look at the test that we give them at the end of each quarter and we see okay where where do we want to end up and we do the backwards mapping and um, the benchmark test to me should be something that they don't really have to study or cram for because that's what you've been preparing for for the whole quarter and looking at those results then you can see how to improve your teaching We've had a wonderful week in staff development in the English department. We started the week by gathering together as a department to score the eighth grade writing samples that we had done this year. And it's so powerful to sit there and to work with one another, scoring papers, looking at what is important and whether or not our students are meeting the standards in writing and what we need to do and where things are going well. And my colleague and I were talking this afternoon, we were able to focus on where our kids didn't do well. That was a real thrust of our discussion. It's not important to talk about the, the answers where they, 99 percent of the kids got the correct answer. Again, focusing in on our standards, what is important for us to teach, what do our kids know and what do they need to know. And this is all being culminated in the work that we are doing today, looking at the benchmark exams that our students chose for this quarter. This type of staff development is more powerful than anything you can do because you're really dealing with the nuts and bolts of what needs to be done in the classroom.